New York Democrat Tom Suozzi wins George Santos's old seat. The House of Representatives impeaches Secretary of Homeland Security Alejandro Mayorkas. Donald Trump has a new trial date for his Manhattan criminal case and the most recent updates regarding the last Super Bowl weekend. Additionally, various local sports teams face off in momentous competitions. An Eagle Valley student will be going to nationals in Iowa this summer for speech and debate. The Gypsum Airport will add two new flight routes this June, and Eagle County Schools hires a new director of safety and security. All of this and much more in the very first episode of Rewind with Alvaro Marin Garcia. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Rewind with Alvaro Marin Garcia. I'm your host, Alvaro Marin Garcia, and I'm so excited to be here. Rewind is supported by My Future Pathways TV. My Future Pathways serves and supports Eagle County's underserved youth and families in a holistic way to help them meet their full potential. My Future Pathways offers two youth centers in Eagle County, one in Gypsum and one in Edwards. And they also offer mentoring opportunities every week and also a free summer camp. Did I mention that it's free because every single program that they offer is 100% free, no strings attached. If you're interested, go to myfuturepathways.org for more information and see if it's right for you. My name is Alvaro Marin Garcia, and I participate in speech and debate here at Eagle Valley High School, and I will be attending Williams College for the class of 2028 this fall. And I am the new host of this brand new show under MFP TV called Rewind with Alvaro Marin Garcia. Rewind with Alvaro Marin Garcia will be available on all major podcasting platforms from Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Amazon Music Podcasts. And now let's get into the stories. On Tuesday, February 13th, Democrat Tom Suozzi has won the U.S. House special election for New York's 3rd Congressional District. The special election was called after Representative George Santos was expelled from the House following a scathing House ethics report that found rampant misusage of campaign funds and other violations of federal law. Also on Tuesday, the House of Representatives voted to impeach Secretary of Homeland Security Alejandro Mayorkas. This was the second vote since last week when they fell short of impeaching the secretary over the issue of the southern border. On Tuesday, the House of Representatives narrowly passed two articles of impeachment from a vote of 214 to 213. They impeached him on two charges, breach of public trust and refusal to comply with the law. Republicans say it's justified considering the crisis at the southern border, whereas Democrats believe it's a politicized prosecution meant to harm President Biden's re-election chances. And... Secretary Mayorkas is expected to be acquitted once his trial begins in the Senate. Top Vladimir Putin critic Alexei Navalny has died in an Arctic prison at age 47, according to Russian authorities reporting yesterday on Friday. Alexei Navalny was an, a top opponent of Vladimir Putin. President Biden said at a news conference on Friday that there is no doubt that Putin was behind uh, Navalny's death. And in tragic news yesterday... The University of Colorado, Colorado Springs experienced a shooting that resulted in the deaths of two students at a dorm building on campus. Our hearts go out to the victims of the families at this sentimental time. In other news, Nike will lay off around 2% of its employees, or close to around 1,700 of its workforce, as the sportswear behemoth looks to cut as much as $2 billion in costs. All right, now concerning news surrounding the former president, Donald Trump. Not exactly the best week for the former president. A New York judge on Thursday set a trial date for former President Donald Trump's Manhattan criminal trial, where he faces 34 felony uh, charges, accusing him of falsifying business records in relation to hush money payments that were illicitly brought on. The trial is set to begin on March 25th and will last approximately six weeks. On Friday, a New York judge ordered Trump to pay over $350 million dollars in relation to his civil fraud trial, where he was found liable for conspiring to manipulate his net worth. The punishment also includes a prohibition on Trump from holding any top position at a New York company for three years. And there were also punishments meted out for his adult sons. All right, but in better news, on Thursday, Caitlin Clark of the Iowa Hawkeyes basketball team became the NCAA Division I women's all-time leading scorer and broke the conference record in career assists. A huge congratulation to Ms. Clark at this time. All right, you probably don't even need me to say this, but of course, the Kansas City Chiefs beat the San Francisco 49ers on a momentous and record-breaking Super Bowl last Sunday. So, you already know the facts, but let's talk about some other facts that you might not have necessarily heard of. So, this marks the third Super Bowl in five years that the Chiefs have won, and the 49ers' third time in a row losing the Super Bowl game. And here's some fast facts about the game. 
It is only the second time in Super Bowl history that the game has ever gone to overtime. The 2024 Super Bowl drew a record 123.4 million viewers, breaking the record set just last year by the 2023 Super Bowl. Obviously, every single year is going to be a, breaking, a record-breaking Super Bowl year. Additionally, talking about gambling, a record 50.4 million adults bet a whopping $16 billion on the Super Bowl game. So again, records are just being broken all throughout. But here's a fun one. A Monmouth University poll, according to the New York Times, found that almost one in five Americans believe in an election conspiracy that somehow Taylor Swift is going to work alongside President Joe Biden to be able to deliver an endorsement that will hand the election off to Joe Biden in spite of the former President Donald Trump. Of course, this conspiracy theory has no backing whatsoever, but still, a lot of people do believe in it. And I believe it's kind of funny because, you know, Taylor Swift does have that much influence. All right, finally, in national news this week, Taco Bell announced over 12 new menu items at, an, at a product launch event that closely resembled a Apple event. Let us know what items you're excited about. I know me personally, I'll be trying all of the products and I know my producer behind the camera will also be trying those products with me. All right, now let's move on to local news for Eagle County, Colorado. All right, Eagle County schools will add a new position at their district for a director of safety and security. After an extensive process, which included many interviews and screenings, uh, Tad Deegan has been chosen for this position. I believe I speak for my future pathways when we want to congratulate Tad Deegan for this incredible job and uh, we wish him good luck at this new uh, district position. Uh, also talking about Eagle County Schools, the Eagle County School District Board of Education has declared a vacancy that was held by former school board president Michelle Stetcher, who resigned after a move across Eagle County made her unable to serve in her district. The school board will go ahead and appoint a new member, but there will be an election for this seat held on November of 2025. On Wednesday, the Vail Daily reported that Eagle County Regional Airport will add two new flight routes on June 2nd to the destinations of Houston, Texas and Chicago, Illinois. Previously, the only destinations that you can travel with through Eagle County Regional Airport are Denver and uh, Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. All right, additionally, Audrey Tatro of Eagle Valley High School and Kai Thayer of Battle Mountain High School qualified last week into the National Speech and Debate Tournament, which will be held in Des Moines, Iowa. And the event they qualified in each was Congressional Debate, Audrey in Congressional Debate House, and Kai in Congressional Debate Senate. MFP TV actually conducted an interview with Audrey, available now on Facebook and YouTube. We wish Kai and Audrey the best of luck. The Eagle Valley Devils boys basketball team faced Glenwood yesterday for the district title after four straight consecutive wins. Unfortunately, the Devils fell to Glenwood and were unable to obtain the victory. A huge props though for a great season. All right, and finally for local news for Eagle County, Colorado, I was surprised to see this story, just me personally, because I think it was a really, really interesting story. Uh, Dr. Ernest Braxton and his team from Vail Summit Orthopedics and Neurosurgery traveled to Nepal for Spine Week, conducting academic sessions, performing surgeries, including the first awake spine surgery in the country, and experiencing the resource disparities between U.S. hospitals and those in Nepal. My Future Pathways, of course, gives a firm congratulations to Dr. Braxton and his team and wish him luck in future surgeries. Just a reminder that Rewind with Alvaro Marin Garcia is available on video on Facebook and on YouTube and available on every single major podcasting platform. All right, I'm your host, Alvaro Marin Garcia, and have a great weekend.